Hey guys, happy Wednesday. Hope you all had a wonderful week so far and let's jump into it. We got a lot to cover. Let's start with ocean conditions. That's right, ocean market conditions. All right guys, so as I've been mentioning, the rates for ocean rates continuously keep going up. Um, last week, they, I had rates up to almost $5,900 to $6,000 for an FEU out of China to the east and west coast. Um, today, they're pushing about 58 up to $6,300 for an FEU. $6,300 for an FEU. So um, as you can tell, it's slowly going up little by little. So I'm hoping the FMC really jumps in here soon to help regulate some of this. Um, capacity is still a disaster. Forget capacity. Um, the huge shortage of equipment that's happening in Asia. Asia. Um, I did come across an article which I'll elaborate more next week. Um, the U.S. is getting the blame for it. Um, this is nothing new. Um, you have to understand the United States is the largest importer. We, we consume everything. So of course everything is going to come here. Uh, now I do question our infrastructure and our inf infrastructure might need a little bit of help, but hopefully we'll see what happens with our new infrastructure budget plan here in the United States. Um, also, uh, with respect to capacity, I did get a couple of emails from some of my agents overseas that they have been able to find a little bit of space on a couple of vessels um, that are going into Houston and going into Miami. So I did get one, and I could. if you guys need this information, please send me an email. I'll mark my email below, and I could give you their contact. Um, from the United States, from Shangzhou to Houston, transit time's about 31 days, um, and there's about $7,200 for an FEU. Um, also, from Yantian to Miami, um, transit's about 38 days, and the rate's about 8,800 in FEU. Um, like I said, if you guys need more space um, and you could route your vessels to those ports, send me an email and I will send you over the contact from this gentleman and he can definitely help you out. Hopefully um, he'll have space by the time you respond to, or send him an email. Um, let's talk also about people routing over to the port of, Sa of uh, Savannah. Um, as I mentioned last week, Savannah was getting hit. Um, we had actually an email from a gentleman in Savannah having some issues pulling out containers. And I just found out that Savannah actually hit a record month of March of about 298,000 extra TEUs, which brings that up to 48% more than what they did last March compared to this March. So it continues to go up. Um, it's, it's amazing. And what they're figuring is by the end of the year that they're going to have a total of about 5 million TEUs going through the port of Savannah. What does that mean? Start looking at other ports. Everybody's starting to move. Start looking at other ports and options. Absolutely. Start looking at your options. Um, also, the Port of Los Angeles. I posted on uh, my page that there was a bit of a port strike or a trucker strike on Friday. Um, this trend will continue, so be prepared. Um, you're going to see more and more strikes. The ILA is not happy, so I'm hoping this isn't... Uh, it seems like the perfect storm, but let's, let's hope for the best. Um, I know that a lot of them are in negotiations. Now, air freight. Um, I did get a lot of rate, uh, questions about air freight. Um, just so that you guys know, air freight capacity is pretty bad. Um, depends of where you're coming from, especially in parts of China. It could be about two, three delays, and some can go back to three or three or four weeks in delays. It just depends. Um, so, but I will keep you updated on that. Also, the reason I discussed the air freight is that you need to know something that's incredibly important. And please take note of this. Effective June 31st or July 1st, all cargo airlines, okay, will have a 100% mandatory screening. What does this mean? Um, that anything that goes in to a cargo airline, okay, is going to be screened. So right now we screen everything that goes into passenger airlines, which are packs, right? But now that they're going into the air cargo, not all freight was um, required to be screened to go into a freighter. Um, effective on July 1st, that all changes. Um, I know that this date's been pushed, pushed, but I haven't seen any changes so far and the dates are coming quick. So just so everybody knows, even though you're getting your air freight now quicker, get ready because screening is coming on July 1st, unless they push it again, but I have not seen um, anything in the news or in any reports that it's gonna be pushed. So be ready, TSA is going to enforce this quite a bit, so 100% screening on cargo flights also. So 
Just be prepared, because it is coming. Just prepare, prepare, prepare. That's all I could say. All right, and now let's get into the Q&A. So our first question is, what is a consolidator? I know that last week I mentioned that you can use consolidators to moving ocean freight. So it's very simple. A consolidator is a company that will take shipments from multiple shippers. They'll have numerous shippers inside of their container, and they'll sell it to you by cubic foot or cubic meter, depending. It's normally weight or measure. And what they'll do is they'll consolidate that container and then they'll ship it overseas. And then once it's there, it'll be broken down and then they'll contact you to pick it up once it's cleared and vice versa. So consolidation is also another way to being able to, I wouldn't say guarantee space, but being that they do have allocated space in a lot of these vessels and to some of these destinations, um, it's a way to moving smaller shipments. So I would definitely look into consolidators. There's a lot of consolidators um, in the United States. If you guys need help, locating or trying to figure out what would be a good consolidator for you, um, just send me an email. My email's below um, and I'll let you know. But keep in mind, every consolidator is not good at every destination. So make sure that when you choose that consolidator, they are good to certain destinations or at least the destinations that you want to go to. So that's very important. So make sure you look into that. Um, but that's really a consolidator. It's, it's very simple. Now, question two was, what is the difference between a ramp and a port? Okay, so the ramp and the port is totally different, but a lot of people get it confused because they don't understand. So when a vessel comes to berth, she typically comes and they'll unload her, and then they'll move the containers into what they call a rail depot. Um, and when they move them into these rail depots, they'll be moved on a rail and they'll be trained to these destinations, like Chicago has certain ramps. We have about four or five ramps here in Chicago alone. Um, and that's where we would be the final destination. So if you have a booking with your freight forwarder and you say you want it from, from door to ramp, it'll be all the way to the ramp. So if I have a shipment going to Dallas and it's being routed via Houston, it'll come off of the vessel in Houston, it'll be put on a ramp, and it'll be railed to the ramp up in DFW or in Dallas. So that's the difference. So ports are typically where the vessel comes to berth and the ramps are the outskirts where it's being sent out and it goes by rail. So um, now you guys understand, you're starting to understand a little bit more about how this supply chain works. Now there are a little bit of uh, challenges right now with the rail system as well, um, which we'll touch on next week. But that is really the difference between a rail and a port. Just make sure that you understand where you're routing your cargo be um, diligent about how you're moving it. Um, it's not like it used to be before, just give it to your forwarder or just you know trust when it'll come. Be diligent, know what's going on. There's a lot of port strikes about to start. Um, I, I've heard that the ILA is not very happy. Um, on Friday, um, there was a trucker, um, there was a trucker uh, strike at, at, in Los Angeles. So there's a lot of stuff going on, and I'm trying to give you guys as much information for that you so you could be um, really ready in case anything happens. Again, if you're looking for space coming out of Asia, um, I gave you the information earlier. Just email me on the information below, and I will send you his information, and hopefully he'll help you get here a little bit sooner so we'll see okay well that does it uh, this 10 minutes goes by so fast I'm thinking we may have to switch this platform to YouTube but um, I stuck in as much as I could with you guys um, thank you so much again for all your support looking forward to seeing you guys on Friday again I put my email below and don't forget about our podcast tomorrow with Bill Paul where our topic is Women in logistics, a very important topic um, and a very close one to Mr. Ball, Bill Paul. So it would be great to uh, have you all guys listen. So hopefully you all have a wonderful rest of the week and we'll see you all on Friday. Thank you and be well.